and with investors seeming to shrug off the higher than expected core number, uh, will uh, the Fed do the same come next week? Let's discuss with Steve Odlin, president and CEO of the Conference Board and a CNBC contributor. What do you think that this CPI print does for the deliberations inside the Fed? Well, it's interesting because clearly the market had it all priced in because of, you know, you, you see it uh, in the numbers today. You know, the conference board has projected that the, uh, the Fed will remain constant here and skip an increase in September, but we'll have to come back in November and raise the interest rate one more time, discount rate by 25 basis points. So we think there's one more in here. And I think this, today's numbers prove that there still is work to be done here. Everybody's disappointed in today's numbers because it's gone back up and we've been waiting for this holy grail of 2%. Now, having said that, if you look at the numbers, the real difference month to month is gasoline prices. Yeah, it's gas. It's all and gas. It's all gas. And that is really important for the consumer because it's pretty low on ha Maslow's hierarchy, food and gas. But, you know, even food, you can trade down and you can have different meals. With gas, there's gas. You got to put it in in order to get to work, to get to school, to commute. So it tends to be a fixed cost, and it really uh, affects the poor people uh, disproportionately hard. We've got two things going on. Russia and Saudi Arabia both cut supplies this month, and also you've still got the end of the summer gas formula. Now, that ends on Friday, September 15th, and, they, and the refiners can go back and get more throughput here in the United States. Hopefully, then, as you get more throughput, if nobody else internationally cut supply. We can kind of get, get these gas prices back down. But you see consumer confidence directly correlated in their mood, directly correlated with gas prices. You can almost see it month to month. Well, it's, it, it, is the, it is the tried and true thing because people, it is the one thing that people see on their way to work, on their way to yep. pick up their kids. They see the signs that tell them whether uh, the transportation fuel is getting more expensive or not. The other one that was uh, sticky and up from a year ago is shelter costs. Yeah, and, you know, look, you would think that raising interest rates would cool the market. The problem is that there is a lag in the market from the interest rates, the mortgage rates, and so forth, through the rental market. And it's still the rental market that's driving that increase in shelter. But you also have a housing shortage at the same time. This has never been seen before. So, you know, yeah, you've reduced the demand, but you still need supply in here. And so I'm sure the home builders and other commercial multi-unit builders are going, well, which way should we go here? Because, you know, do you, do you build into this thing? Because normally you would just shut it off. But at this point in time, you still need it. So you've got two things going on here. The biggest variability is gas. And you talked about being 100 days out from the Christmas holiday. That's really important to this economy from a consumer standpoint. And if consumers continue to have to put all their money in their gas tank, there's not going to be as bright of a holiday season, and that's going to hit GDP.